Hey guys, so I was messing about with my old PC down here yesterday, which I will show you later, and I pulled this air cooler here, and you can see I've still got the thermal paste at the bottom, I need to remove that. But what I'd like to do today is publicly declare my undying love for air coolers, such as this big monstrosity here. So this is the Thermal Right Legrand Macho RT, which is just the best name ever for a CPU cooler. And this has been cooling my 8700K for about four years at this point, and it's never missed a beat. From a performance point of view, this has been excellent. It's cooled the 8700K when it was overclocked as well, and it looks quite good when it's actually in the PC as well. Now, it looks like this model has been pulled from the market. No surprises there. Technology moves forward and thermal right, I've got new coolers on the market. And certainly, Looking at this, there's better options on the market now from Noctua and Be Quiet and other companies as well, but this still performs really well. And it really does symbolize what I love about air coolers in general. Yes, they do tend to be big. And, you know, I will talk about some of the negative points about these as well. But what I will say about this is these things are indestructible. You just cannot break these things. These are invincible. And yes, you know, after four years of me moving around in the case, etc., some of the fins are maybe a little bit bent. It still works. It doesn't, you know, it's not like I've seen any change in temperatures. It still works really well. And it's not like with all-in-one CPU coolers, you know, with liquid cooling in the pump, maybe you can run into some problems three or four years down the line. Although we are seeing some companies offering six-year guarantees now. But I think this will last another 10 years or 20 years and still do exactly what it did on the first day that I bought it. So I'm a big fan of them, and especially because these things are so much cheaper than all-in-one CPU coolers. Now, you might be surprised I'm talking about this because over the last two months, I published two reviews of all-in-one CPU coolers. Now, for my main PC over here, I initially picked up the ASUS ROG white all-in-one cooler. It's a 360 cooler, and it looked great initially, but I couldn't control the RGB logo using the software. The software was absolutely garbage and I just couldn't control it. And then the RGB logo just stopped working altogether. So I sent it back. And then I got the Fantex 240 MPH. And you can maybe, you know, show in this webcam, you can see it in the background. But if I jump to this webcam, I can give you a very crude look at this all-in-one cooler. I'm moving about here. So this is the cooler here. You can see it's a 240. So in comparison to the ASUS, you know, temperatures are maybe three or four degrees higher, but this looks fantastic. I think this looks better than the other one that I had. I love the look of this. And what I will say about this is that the software doesn't force you, uh, this works with all different software. It doesn't force you to use Gigabyte software, Asusi software, or Fantech software. That will work with a range of different RGB software. So I really do love that cooler from yeah, from Fantex because of that, because I don't have to install another RGB app. But for my next PC case, I've bought another all-in-one cooler. I've got the NZXT Kraken Z73. Now, I'm looking forward to trying this, and I, I, I love the fact that you can customize, uh, you know, the, what's shown in the display, CPU temperature, GPU temperature, etc. But that requires me to install software again, which is going to take up like 5% of my CPU or something. That's nearly always what happens. And as good as that is, and you know, it kind of fits into the build that I'm doing, I still love air coolers, I really do. Now, I'll show you this in a second, but I want to show you the, the PC that this was in. So, this is the Meshify C case, which it was in. And I would actually normally have this glass case off, just because it, you know, it still worked well, it was still quiet, and it dropped temperatures a little bit by taking the case off. But if I get this off here... Just as easy as that. There we go. Um, this will give you a better idea as to how, how this cooler, get it down, how this cooler was actually used. So it was sitting there and, you know, it would just sit like that. And that's, if I can get my hand out of the way, that's basically what this looked like when it was in. And it looked a little bit better with the glass over it, I won't lie to you, but it looked okay in my opinion. Now, I'll talk about the negatives when I've got this PC case open. The negatives are, and one of the reasons why I've not been using this for the new PC, the sheer size of this all in, uh, this air cooler and the sheer size of coolers such as the Noctua means that it can be difficult to work with. 
one of the biggest complaints from uh, of people from um, that talk about the Noctua cooler is that it makes it difficult to get into your memory. Now, I didn't have that issue with uh, with this board and with this cooler. I could still access the memory, but it did cause a number of other problems. It made it very difficult for me to get down to the, the CPU power cable. And, you know, there's like a fan cable down there as well, which was really difficult to get to. But also it overhung this M2 slot here as well. And that meant that when I was, when I had to change the drive and I had to switch the drive over or copy files over or do anything like that, I had to repaste everything, you know, any, any kind of change in that area of the PC, be it that SSD, be it the fan or I had to change the power cable or anything, I had to take this whole thing out and repaste it. And it was an absolute pain in the ass because of that. So with these larger air coolers, certainly the larger ones, they can be a little bit of a pain to work with in, in a lot of cases. But as much of a pain as it is, if you're just going to be, you know, setting it up and then just leaving it, it's a non-issue because you, you might not have to deal with it again for three or four years. But certainly, you know, I've changed a lot of drives over the years and I've, you know, kind of messed about with different things. So it has been a little bit uh, more of a pain at times. So I'll just show you how this uh, was made. Obviously, this part goes over at the bottom and then you would just put it down like that. And installation with this, you know, I did a video about this a few years ago, but the installation process is very simple. Basically, you've got two screws here and one is at the side and the other one you go through down here like this. And if I show you this, you'll see that this is a thermal right screwdriver. And this is what actually came with this cooler. Now, what I will say about this, maybe I'm an old man at this point, but when you get older, you accumulate screwdrivers, you accumulate screwdriver kits. And you can see I've got the iFixit kit here like that. And this kit is fantastic. You know, probably my best set of screwdrivers. But I will say, out of all the screwdrivers that I've got, this is the one that I turn to again and again. This screwdriver is just amazing. It's actually worth buying that cooler just for this screwdriver because it's so long, it's so strong, it just works. And again, like the cooler, it's indestructible. But the reason they included it and the reason these kind of screwdrivers are included with a lot of air coolers is simply because you need to go down into the cooler itself like that to modify that screw there. So that's why it's included. It's not there because they're trying to be nice. It's there because you do need the screwdriver. So like I said, it was a little bit of a pain managing this from time to time because, because the, the side of it here overhung the SSD. If I wanted to change the SSD or upgrade it or do anything, I'd have to take out the, the cooler and then I'd have to clean it up and repaste it. And certainly, you know, if there was anything with the fan or anything else I had to check, then again, I had to take it out as well. Now, that might not always be the case with other, uh, the case, excuse the pun, that might not always be the situation with other PC cases because, you know, how much room you've got, etc. But certainly, with uh, big coolers like this, you do run into some problems sometimes where it just makes it a little bit harder to work with your PC. So, I'll show you how this works. Very similar to other air CPU coolers. But this is a, 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 the big fan, which is at the back. And, and I showed you the specs here. You can see there, uh, 300 to 1300 RPM. And it always ran really, really quiet. So effectively what happens is, and you can see these parts here, which are kind of falling off. But I say, essentially what happens is, you put it like that, and then these hook into the fans, and they go around like that. Now, this fan really works really well. And if I turn it around, you can see that there's actually spaces here for me to put a fan at the other side as well. Now, it's not something I ever did. The reason being that I always found that one fan was enough and it cooled it, you know, just as well as two would have. Maybe if I added a second fan, I maybe could have dropped the speed of the fan sometimes when the PC was getting pushed hard. But certainly using one fan never seemed to be an issue. Now, what I will say though is you could obviously just replace these. You could put a, a good Noctua fan or a good Corsair fan and put two of them at both sides. You know, maybe those fans can run at higher speeds or they're not as loud at higher speeds. So that's something that I could do to prolong the life of this. But like I said, it's still fairly quiet and it still works. Well, what I will say about this, and this is probably the biggest negative about this cooler and the thing that always annoyed me, I didn't care about doing a repaste 
that wasn't the most annoying part of it because it's very quick to just get uh, you know the alcohol and rub it off and then put the thermal paste back on. But these hooks have always been an absolute pain in the ass because they always just bend really easily. And you know, I can if I can get it right, um, the basal hook round like that. Now that's me showing you it without the fan, but when you introduce the fan like this, um, like this, and then you put it like round like that. When you do that and then you've got it inside your PC and you're kind of, your hand's bumping against the side of the PC case, it becomes quite difficult. And I did get better at it because I had to, you know, put the fan on and off a few times. But certainly over the years, that was my biggest complaint with this because it was just such a pain to get those fans on. In hindsight, what they should have done was some sort of, you know, maybe a screw at the top or something or something like a bracket or something to attach the fan a little bit easier. Now, I don't have another air cooler this size at this point, and I have been looking at some of them, such as the one from Noctua, uh, the DH15, DH15S, um, the dark rock ones and all that. And looking at the instruction videos, it seems like the installation process with a lot of these coolers, sometimes it can be a pain as far as attaching the fan or you know just attaching it to your motherboard, etc. But I'm talking about a few negatives here, but like I said at the start of this video, I do love these. I do still love these. And I, I do love the fact that, you know, I think I paid about £70 or something at the time. I got the amazing screwdriver. But even after all these years, there's really no need for me to sell this now because it still works. It still works really well. And yes, it's huge. But for a test bench or, you know, for any other old PC where I'm not going to be messing about with it too much. And, um, you know, I've got a project coming soon where this would be perfect because I, I don't have to change it much after it. Um, for things like that, these kind of air coolers are fantastic. Now, what I'd like to see moving forward, and I've seen some announcements from Noctua doing this as well, where what, being able to use uh, different heat sinks, more modern heat sinks, and partnering them up with a fan that's maybe got additional blades. The, the coolers that are coming out now have got more pipes at the bottom, and with more pipes, you know, the heat sink will be more efficient, and they can make it smaller. And that really would solve I would say 99% of the complaints about these kind of bigger air coolers, these ones that can cool most of the CPUs in the market, the big complaint is that they are big and they overhang your memory and it makes a pain to work with. But maybe over the next year or two, we will see these big uh, heat sinks on top of, well, I suppose that is the cooler, it's a heat sink, but we should hopefully see these become a little bit smaller, you know, because there's more pipes, etc. Maybe the fans will help with that as well. I'd like to see that progress and I'd, I'd like to take the risk next time and maybe go with something like that again. For the time being, most of the ones I was looking at to cool my 5950X, they were going to be kind of the bigger size like this, which is why I didn't uh, go for a, a, an air cooler in this particular situation. But in many other builds, this is maybe the route that I would go. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, guys. And um, as far as this old PC, um, I'm kind of swaying as to what I do with it. Like I said, it's got an 8700K, it's still got a good gigabyte gaming motherboard. And a part of me is just tempted to just leave it in the PC case because the fans are set up and all that. But what I might do is put it onto this PC uh, case here, the one in the background, uh, and then maybe switch into a micro ATX uh, board for this because one of the complaints I've got here, and it's not even got to do with the air cooler, is that because this is an ATX board that's quite a, a small PC case, quite hard to get into the CPU cable, etc. So even an ITX motherboard or an, uh, a micro ATX motherboard than this would be a lot easier to work with, be less problems at the corners, as, you know, because the board would maybe only come down to here. So maybe that's the best thing for me to do is to put in a smaller motherboard, a micro AT ATX motherboards, which, which are generally cheaper anyway, and maybe put it in there and it's maybe just a little bit easier to manage. But I thought, uh, um, I thought you'd enjoy looking at this, guys, because... I think there's a lot of focus on liquid cooling and um, all-in-one CPU coolers, and certainly that's what I've opted for recently as well. But I do love these things, and I don't see myself selling this anytime soon, unless I end up getting a collection of two or three of these. Maybe I'll end up selling it, but right now, this is going to stay in the Muldoon family. So thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned for more videos coming up soon, and yeah, take care. Cheers, guys.